little yarnivores and spiderettes, fiber spider back again with a continuation of how to spin yarn. Yes, in my last video, I showed you how to create a single ply of yarn with a drop spindle. Yes, and with a drop spindle, we are going to now go into how you can ply your yarn together. So as you can see, I've got two strands of my single ply plied together. And this is really good for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one thing, it makes the yarn a little bit thicker. That's always good. Also, if your single ply is not a completely even thickness throughout, if you ply two of those strands together, it sort of balances, out, balances it out a little bit. Also, a single ply, depending upon the amount of twist in it, can be a little insubstantial as far as the strength at times if you don't have enough twist in it. So if you have two plies, it makes it even stronger. So, and also it looks really pretty, you know, and you can create a really neat tweed-like effect depending upon the colors that you use for your single ply. Hmm. So that being said, today we are going to go into plying and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's actually, it goes a lot faster than initially spinning the yarn because the yarn's already spun. It's just a matter of twisting it together. Now, when you are doing your initial single ply yarn, whatever direction that you're going in, when you're plying, you need to go into the opposite direction. So what I did for my single plies, I went in a clockwise direction when I was spinning. So basically, you know, I was doing this, you know, I was spinning in this direction. Well, when plying, you want to go in a counterclockwise direction, the opposite direction. And that will sort of the, the two plies together. Um, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, this actually was my first attempt at plying, and I think it worked out pretty well. And I think that I got the ratio of twist really well. And yeah, so now over here, I have what is called a, a Lazy Kate. And this actually came with a spinning wheel that I got called the Cassandra. I don't really use that wheel actually, but uh, this came with it, and this is for holding your your spools, your bobbins, uh, with yarn. Now, as you can see, these two have some left over, and so we're going to ply these together. And what's great about this is that you don't have your yarn rolling all over the place. It's nice, it's contained, you can make them, you can buy them. Um, you could also... Like for instance, in my last video, I showed how you can wrap your single ply around a paper towel tube. Well, here's what you can do. You can keep it on the tube as opposed to having spindles and spools um, and bobbins and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Um, you can keep it on the tube. And if you have say like a paper towel tube dispenser, if you have two of those, works really well. Uh, instead of using a, a lazy Kate, whatever, you know, I mean, you can use whatever. I don't judge. It's fine. Um, necessity is the mother of invention. Get inventive. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I am going to take two strands, these two strands that are on my lazy Kate. And what we're going to do is we are going to take these little two strands and going to attach them to my, my leader here. And there's really no wrong way of doing this per se, but I did show how to attach a leader in the last video. So you can go back to that. And so I'm just, I'm just gonna tie this on here. You know, nothing, nothing schmancy. Just gonna tie it right on there and the reason why I like to use the leader is because it gets you started with adding the twist. So it's just tied right on there, no problem. And so now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Okay. 
All right, so we are all set to go. And again, I can't stress this enough. Be sure that you are spinning your spindle in the right direction, because after a while of spinning a single ply, you get used to spinning in you know the one direction. In my case, it was clockwise. Well, be sure that you're spinning counterclockwise if that is the case. Um, you know, as long as it's the opposite, all right, that's the important thing. So right now, um, I've got my Lazy Kate on the floor, and so it's nice and out of the way. And I'm going to start by putting some twist into my leader here. So again, going in a counterclockwise direction, just putting some spin in there. And then eventually it won't go any further. So I'm tucking the spindle in between my knees. And so we've got our two strands here. And basically you can keep the two strands separated. I'm holding them together actually. And so basically I'm pinching where I have my leader here. Okay, pinching that. That's where the twist is in the leader right now. And I'm holding now up here and I'm gonna let go of this hand and let the twist fly up into these strands here. Now, you can see that they are twisted together. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to actually add some more twist because all the twist is now out of the leader. So I'm gonna add some more twist to the leader. And so again, being sure to go in the right direction, going counterclockwise, just spinning it, spinning it, spinning it. Okay, good. And then again, pinching here, going out a little bit further here, and then, okay, so the twist went up. Now, yes, I know this is a little bit tricky to see what I'm doing, but I just wanna get this started down here and wrap onto here so that I can get a little bit closer. And right now I'm just sort of getting like a preliminary spin going on here getting onto the hook there and then add some twist. There we go. Okay, now to show you a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm holding the twist, it's in here. Okay, actually I'm gonna park it right there. Now, so I've got the twist, it's in here and I've got my two strands, they're not plied. But when I let go of my right hand and let the twist fly in, watch this. See, it's all twisted together. Now, as far as the amount of twist, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it. But essentially, adding the twist to the two plies is the same process as when you are doing a single ply. Really, it's the same thing. You know, you just have your two strands already made. Now, as far as the amount of twist, you do want to have some, and I'm, I'm just letting the twist go up here. You wanna have some residual twist, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you don't, your plies are not going to stick together. You know, you're, um, as you're knitting or crocheting or using the yarn, your hook is going to, or your needle, it's gonna go in between the plies, it's gonna split, and it's going to be a pain in the tuchus. So what you do need, you do need some residual twist. And when you set the twist, which I'm going to show at another point, not right this second, but when you set the twist by washing it, putting it onto a nitty knotty and setting the twist, um, that evens it out. Now, see right now, I'm gonna hold, there we go, hold it on here, and I'm holding it here. Now let's see how much twist I actually have. Now you can see that I've got my two strands plied together, and they are nice and nice and tidy. They're not going anywhere. So let's see how much twist I actually have. Okay, we've got two of these. It's like a, a little ZZ Top beard. So we've got two of these little twists. 
ultimately you want to go for one you know when you bring it together you want one so apparently i've got a bit too much twist in my plying here so what i'm going to do is without any any more twist i'm going to let the twist go up the yarn just a bit more and we're going to try it again there we go we've got one that's what we want and with this amount of residual twist when we set the twist later it will work out at least it did for me you know I, like i'm i'm a novice at this okay i stress that point i am a novice so that is the right amount of twist so then when you know that you have the right amount of twist just add it to your spindle and then go back to actually i can wind on a little bit more here there we go and then i should do it the other way there we go all right so then add some more twist so again counterclockwise all right adding some more twist and then parking it and then holding up your strands <laughs> see that that you could actually see a little bit better i hope and then park it again and then boop. and then you just keep doing this also you can sort of help the twist travel a little bit and again going to hold that and see how much twist do we have do we have too much or not enough okay that was kind of slow you know it did go together but it's a little bit slow so i i believe i would need more twist so let's add some more twist okay so i added a little bit holding it here holding it here and there we go see it had a little bit of a quicker response which is what we want and then so just wrap it on to your spindle hook it in there and add some more spin and now there are a lot of people uh, I've seen a lot of tutorials on this by the way and there are a lot of people they like to do a center pull ball when doing their plying and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that me personally I don't like the idea because I tried it once before and let's just say it really did not work out for me um let's just check check the twist on this first okay it went but it needs a little bit more chutzpah so let's give it some more chutzpah a little bit more twist um the reason why it did not work out for me was because let's see there we go perfect um the reason why it didn't work out for me is because when I was trying to ply with the center pull ball so that you could grab from the center and the outside, as opposed to doing the two spools, which I did right now, um, the problem that I had personally was that as I was plying, the two strands were getting tangled and twisted together and it became a tangled mess in a very short amount of time and I was not able to fix it and as a result I had to throw out a lot of work and I was very very distraught but you live and you learn um, also I think it was because the the single ply that I had created it was very fibrous there were there's a lot of uh, fluffiness going on so the fibers they were locking together and tangling and so forth and it, it was it was very upsetting you know um, I didn't cry but I wanted to and so that is why if you ask me that is why um, I prefer the idea of taking two spools and working with them separately uh, but if you find that the center pull ball works for you, see, I could use a little bit more twist, I think. 
Um, if the center pull ball works for you, if that technique works for you, great. More power to you, go for it. Uh, also, a lot of people do like using the center pull ball uh, because, um, there we go, there's no waste. So I might end up actually having some waste by the end of this, but we shall see what happens. All right. At any rate, let's keep going. All right, so that is, in a nutshell, how you go about plying two strands, two single plies together. And so basically, you would just keep going and going and going until your spindle is full. And as I've also said before, this goes by a lot faster than your initial spinning and it's a lot of fun. Okay, see, it, it doesn't quite have enough. It needs a little bit more chutzpah. Just add a little bit more. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that, there we go. And so that is really all there is to it. You, you don't want to have, um, your your yarn to be droopy no um you do want it to have that that bit of a bounce to it where you have one sort of section in the middle that has a nice spring action to it and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how you can set the twist in your yarn whether it is a a two ply or a single ply, regardless, it is the same process. And so what do we got? Okay, could use a little bit more, just a little bit more. It is the same process, whether it is a two ply, a single ply, a what have you. There we go. I love this. This is so much fun. It's like playing with a slinky. Um, and so basically what it amounts to is wrapping your yarn from here onto a nitty knotty and then getting it into hank form and then washing it and then letting it dry well first beating it up <laughs> you'll see what i mean it's a lot of fun um and uh yeah so that that's really all there is to it uh i do hope that this helps clarify some things because you know you put all that work into your single your single plies you want to make sure that they will be usable so I hope this put your mind at ease somewhat so with that being said I am now going to ply the rest of what I have on my spools and then I'm going to show you how to wind it onto your nitty knotty and how to get your hank ready for washing and we'll go from there Okie dokie. Hello again. All right, so I plied everything that I could, and this is what I have here. Now, obviously, it's not full, um, but the reason why is because I ran out. And so this was one of the spools. The other spool had this much left over. So because I was guesstimating as far as you know, splitting up how much between the two. Well, yeah, so I have a little bit of leftover, but as you can see, based on the thickness of the center here and there, it's not a tremendous amount of difference. I'll use it for something, I'm sure. <laughs> so that being said, what we have to do now is we have to wind our yarn onto a nitty knotty. Yes, now a nitty knotty is basically a framework that you wrap it around to make a hank of yarn. Basically, it's one of those big continuous loopy deals, uh, which inevitably then somebody has to stand like this, holding it so that you can then ball it up, if you have somebody handy. At any rate, so I bought one. You can make them out of PVC piping, like this, uh, with little joints and things. Me, I decided I'm just gonna buy one, so I did. I went to, Etsy 
and I bought this one. It's called the Skein It by Needle Clicks Etc. And then inside, inside of this little card, it shows you the various pieces. And when you use the various lengths that you can end up with, and by the way, these instructions, good stuff. Um, the various lengths of the different piping, you can either create a, uh, a loop that is, what is it, uh, one yard, one and a third yards, or two yards based on how you configure this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a one yard length hank, if you will. So every wrap that I do will be one yard. So that's the, the longer tube. Also, I'm going to try and find um, the link to this item in, and I'll put it in the description box down below. So this would be, if I'm not mistaken, this would be one yard when it is wrapped. So basically you get your little framework here and you twist it so that it is kind of wonky woo. All right, and then we are going to wrap it. Now this really, it is easy. Now I'm going to just put this in between my knees here and got my yarn here. And I'm gonna tie this on there we go. <laughs> I'm going to tie this onto my nede nade. Just tie it in a knot, make it nice and taut. I need a rhyme. Um, so I'm just going to tie it onto here, and then I'm going to show you how to do the winding process. And really, it is, it's easy but it is one of those necessary steps. Okay, so got it tied on, no problem. All right, so I'm gonna back up actually, because you're gonna wanna see the, the full effect of what it is that I'm doing here. All right, so basically, it's a lot of over and under action here. Whoa, don't wanna lose my loop there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going underneath here. So I'm going under. This is this is really awkward to film, but you know, I'm going underneath and then I'm going over the next one and then underneath the next one. And I'm turning this, although ultimately you don't want to turn it. You just want to sort of maneuver. So under, and then over the top of this one. So it's a lot of over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself situated. So basically it's underneath and then over and then underneath and then over. So you're not wrapping a loop around the whole thing. It's just over, under, over, under, see? I know this, this is like really wonky at best. I know, I know, but I am trying here. So basically it's an over, under method, just over and over and over. Um, and you do this process until you run out and then you tie it on once again. And so I'm just gonna back up here and do this a bit to show you that it really is not difficult. Yes, it is a little time consuming like anything else, but it is worth it. So I'm just going over under and just going to do the entire length that I have here on my spindle. Now, what you would want to do, I wasn't able to do it, but what you would want to do is really fill up the spindle because 
that will make for fewer joins later. And I'm going to be using the Russian join, I believe that's what it's called, the Russian join, um, to attach this yarn that I'm presently making to my pre-existing ball. And the fewer joins you have, the better. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I'm done. And then I'm going to show you how to do the tying so that your hank will not get all twisted and tangled and freaky deaky, because um, that's no good. And so I'll show you how to do the tying, then the washing and setting the twist. And that's, you know, that's essentially the gist of it. So I'm going to finish this up off camera, and then I'm going to show you what to do next. All righty. All righty. So I have wound all of my yarn onto my Nitty Knotty. And what I did was I tied the end to one of these. Now, because I used the one yard length for, you know, this particular setting, um, all I did was count the number of strands and it was about 30. So I have about 30 yards on here, if I'm not entirely mistaken. You never know. So now what we need to do is, well, we've got this crazy long loop wound onto our Knitty Knotty. And so what we need to do now is we need to secure our yarn so that it doesn't go flying all over the place when we take it off of the Knitty Knotty. So you're going to need some thread or some, you know, some yarn that is not wool, okay? Not wool. This is crochet cotton thread. And so I'm gonna be using this to do the tying. And basically what you need to do is to create sort of like a double figure eight, if you will. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little piece here and I'm separating this into three groups. Okay, so going to go under and pull that up. So I've got one little group and then separate another little group and then go down. and then pull the tail. So basically we went under, over, under, and then we need to go in the opposite way around the, the way back. So going to go the opposite way. So right now that is contained and then find this split right here. And this is a lot easier to do off camera, trust me. Okay, so now we have our under, over, under, over. So we've got one little group and then we've got another little group and then we're going to tie this off. Now you don't want it to be too tight. No, but you don't want it to be loosey goosey either. So I'm just gonna tie this real simple. Like so, and I'm gonna double that because we don't want that not going anywhere. Mm -mm. There we go. All right, so got one of these. So I'm going to do another bunch of these little tie offs in various places. I'm going to do another one here, and then I'm going to do another two for these groupings. Um, I would say, you know, every maybe six inches or so, you know, uh, do another, you know, bunch of tie offs. Um, and again, you don't want to be too tight with them, but 
uh, you do want to have them in place. Otherwise, you are going to be in a world of hurt later, and you'll see what I mean. So for right now, I'm just going to finish up my tying, and then we're going to get on to the washing. All righty. All right, so I have it all tied off, and now is the moment of truth. Basically, all you have to do is to just take off one of these little arms, and whoop, there we go. Whoa. Okay. Now, this is kind of a scary part, I admit, but it's a necessary evil. All right, so now, as you can see, we have a bit of a tangled mess, but it's not really. It's not really. See, right now, it looks like when we're not doing this, it's like kinky, kinky mess. Okay, but... That's why we're going to do the setting of the twist by washing it, which I have my little bin set up. Now, because we have these little ties on here, it's going to stay, you know, a nice even loop, which is what we want. And so now we are going to basically put it into a little tub of, you know, not hot, hot water, but it is the hot setting of my faucet. You know, you don't want it to be too terribly hot. And uh, yeah, so we're going to set the twist so it doesn't keep doing this. That's the idea. All right, so let's show you. All right, so today is a day of a lot of different and weird camera angles, admittedly. All right, so right now, I'm going to just put this into the water and submerge it, I'm trying to get all the air out of our fiber. You can see all the little bubbles popping up there. Now you could just let this sit in the water and eventually it will sink down, but I'm not that patient. So right now we're just trying to get all the air out of our fiber and I'm just lightly squeezing it. Now, what you want to be careful of is you don't want to felt your yarn because at this point, if you felt your yarn, uh, you're going to have one big sort of clotted mess and that is no fun. So right now what I'm doing is I'm finding my loop, my original loop, because we have the ties. And so right now it is one big soggy woggy mess. Okay. Now what I what I did with my previous lengths, okay, is let it sort of dance around in the water a bit, get used to the temperature of the water. And then now whether or not I'm actually doing this correctly or not, that remains to be seen. But this is what I did previously and from the ball of yarn that you saw before, I think it worked out pretty well. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to felt the yarn, but I do want to agitate it just a little bit because in doing so, it makes the, the plies sort of, you know, stick together and have a bit of cohesion together. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing the water out like so, squeezing the water out, and I'm not agitating the yarn a tremendous amount. No, I'm not. But what I am doing is squeezing the water out, which gives it a little bit of an agitation, okay? And I'm gonna do that again, going through the, the length once again. Just sort of massaging the, the length of my hank of yarn here. And you don't want to overdo it. No, you do not want to overdo it. Because otherwise, like I said, you are going to end up with a, a felted mess. So if you look closely after squeezing the water out, kind of hard to see, I know, because the lighting in here stinks, but 
if you look closely, the, the plies are sort of doing their thing together. Um, and that, that is ultimately what we want. Now, I'm just going to give it one more squeeze. And then we are going to do the, the drying process. Um, you know, as Bob Ross would say, we're going to beat the devil out of it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I uh, just want to dry off my hands so I can turn off my camera. And I'm going to show you the next step. Alrighty. Hello again. <laughs> yes, I am on my kitchen floor just for you guys. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get more water out of our, our length here. Now, I did squeeze out a bunch of the water, but right now we need to get even more out of it. And as you can see, it's not doing the, the weird twisty thing anymore. And that's perfect. That's great. That's exactly what we wanted. So right now, what I'm going to do is I am going to lay this down on a towel that I have right here. I'm going to lay this down and then fold the towel over and then over again. And now we're going to do a little, a little dance. So <laughs> just do a little, little dance, just sort of doing a kneeling walk on your yarn and you don't have to do anything major and I'm making a big production out of this for nothing, but it's fun. And it works, you know, for getting out more of the moisture. Yeah, it does. Okay, so after doing the safety dance, S S S S A A A A F F F F E E E E T T T T Y. I'm not going to do the dance, but anyway. Um, so after doing your little boogie woogie, okay, then you open up the towel and you have your yarn. Okay, and then. Another thing that you can do is beat the devil out of it, as Bob Ross would say. So basically, what it amounts to is thwapping it on the floor. And this will separate the strands of yarn if they're still sort of stuck together. It'll separate them out a little bit and it will sort of Pull up the yarn, give it a little bit more air in there, and it, it's great for releasing any aggression. <laughs> so I have sort of fluffed it out just a little bit, and it's a lot more airy. And I'm going to show you. Oof, oof, oof. My goodness, my knees. All right. And we have ourselves some yarn. Yes, and it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So now, that's better. So now, what you want to do is you want to hang this up to dry. It usually does not take very long, but you want to hang this up to dry. And if you're finding that it is still doing this like crazy twisty thing, then that means that you added too much twist when you were doing your plying. But what you can do is when you're, when you're hanging it, you can add a little bit of a weight, not too much, but you can add a little bit of a weight so that it will hang straight and then when it dries in that weighted hanging state it should dry straight but it's yarn <laughs> oh i am so excited because now all i have to do is wait for this to dry and then i can attach it to my pre-existing ball 
And like I said, I'm probably going to do a Russian join so that it's nice and seamless, relatively speaking, and then it'll be ready. So listen, if you liked this tutorial, I know this was a little bit weird, not the usual, but we do what we can, right? <laughs> um, if you liked this tutorial, please give a little thumbs up button, show your support. You know I appreciate your appreciation. I always do. Sorry. Um, and also please hit subscribe because I do try to post videos often, whether it's knitting or crocheting or audiobook narration, or of course my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, also my Etsy store. Uh, you know, all those links will be in the description box down below. Also, um, yes, if I can find the link for the Nitty Naughty, I will put that in the description box down below, as well as the previous video that I did on how to spin a single ply. It's a lot of work, but it's really, really pretty. It's really, really pretty. So I think it's worth it. You know, um, yes, it is a lot of work, but being able to knit or crochet with something that you made yourself, mind blowing. And uh, I, I would say give it a try. Definitely give it a try. Um, now, as far as the process with the, the, the Nitty Naughty uh, and setting the twist, you can do that with a single ply or a double ply, whichever. I just wanted to reiterate that whatever it is that you decide to do. At any rate, I'm going to scoot now. <laughs> Long video, but well worth it. I hope you think so too. And I will catch you in my next video. Be sure to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.